Hello, everybody. I'm going to wait a couple minutes for some people to be able to get on um, before I start my official talk. So just wait. Okay, hi, I'm Shoshana Ork. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I specialize in working with people, number one, um, who struggle with anxiety and find that that anxiety is holding, holding them back a lot of times from doing the things that they wanna do. Um, and I also work with people who are struggling with self-esteem and being able to um, be happy with who they are and, and be able to, and I help people, um, get to their goals and in relationships and things like that. But, um, one of the main topics that I've actually focused on in the Instagram lives is, um, anxiety. And in the past Instagram, uh, live sessions that I, talks that I've given, I've spoken about, um, different pathways to anxiety. So a lot of times people, uh, uh, feel anxious like and people different people feel uh, d different types of anxiety all the time and it, it uh, shows up in different ways for different people um, but what and the, a lot of times they'll go to a therapist and the therapist will say oh I practice CBT and um, like let's just do this like let's change the your thought process and um, and through that you'll be able to get better um, but when someone has gone through trauma or they have like an overactivated amygdala or something like that, uh, CBT, no amount of CBT is going to work because, um, the amygdala is the thing that is activated and the cortex is what, uh, CBT cognitive behavioral therapy is what that targets. So I spoke a lot about that in different Instagram lives. Um, so the the sources of anxiety and the reason why it's so important for you to know about that. Um, and I also spoke about anxiety in times of trauma, um, how to deal with that and why it comes up and what's going on for us. Um, I also spoke about medications and um, the, the different uh, points that it's important to be aware of and how med medication can help us with anxiety. But a lot of the time, uh, people who are struggling with anxiety will find that there is a comorbidity with, with depression. That means that not only are they struggling with anxiety, a lot of times they'll feel depressed or depression, like uh, feelings of depression. Um, it will, sometimes it will come like little bouts of depression and depressed feelings. And other times people could be feeling like I I'm anxious, like most of the time, but then I'll have like long periods of depression or vice versa that people will feel depressed. And then like, they'll kind of snap out of the feelings of depression and feel and being depressed and actually feel more feelings of anxiety. So a question that comes up a like a significant amount is like, what is the actual connection between the two? What is the connection between anxiety and depression? So one of the simple understandings, which like, yeah, if, if I would have like only one minute or less to explain the connection between the two, is that a simple way of understanding the connection between anxiety and depression is that the the anxiety is trying to predict and trying to control the environment many, many many, many times. That's what the anxiety is there for. It is, again, the purpose of it is to like save us and try to protect us and keep us alive. But a lot of times it's not exactly on the mark and it is, is overworking and overworking and overworking to try to save us. And when the body and the brain feel like there is nothing that they could do and it's kind of like, oh, there's no point in doing any of this or I can't reach the things that I need to do because I need a, I don't have control over the situations that I, I really feel like I have to have control over. It will get to a place of like uh, surrendering, like giving up. And those are the feelings of depression in that case. So that's like a very, very simple 
way of understanding that like when the body gets like very very tired of constantly being so anxious it will go to a state of depression um that's a very simple way of understanding it but i'm going to go a little bit more into uh detail of what is actually going on in the brain and what we could do i'm, I'm hopefully going to give you some tools i'm going to try to give you some tools uh throughout this talk on how to deal with this and how to prevent it a little bit more or if you're if you're if you are experiencing this then um what you can do about this so in general the longer a person is dealing with unmanaged anxiety like high high levels of anxiety the more at risk they are for depression and the interesting thing is that when they've done like all the a lot of neuroscientists have done research on the brain and the body and the actual um information about the causes of depression are less known we know less about that than we do about the causes for anxiety and what exactly is going on in the brain when someone is feeling well we know a lot about it when someone's feeling anxious not as much is known about it um when someone is feeling depressed but what we do know is that both the amygdala and the cortex are involved when someone is feeling depressed so what that means is that the cortex and the amygdala which are both parts of the brain that are very very much involved in the feelings of anxiety that we get either you could get um cortex which is cortex based anxiety which is like thoughts ocd tendencies um feeling like you need to control your environment very very much those are all coming and being very creative sometimes people find that they're very very creative in in giving meaning to the situations that they're going through that they're going through um that's all coming from the cortex um and that a lot of times will go to the amygdala cause the anxiety response and then we'll feel anxious but um other times that just the amygdala is involved so let's just say there's a scary sound or something like that or someone has gone through a trauma or something like that the cortex is completely not involved in that and the it goes straight to the amygdala and we have an anxiety response from that and in those cases what you deal with when you're when you're working let's say in therapy is you're you're doing amygdala based interventions you're not you're not working with the cortex at all so and then there are other times that the cortex and the amygdala are both at play and there are other interventions used for that but with depression what we're seeing when the when the research has been done is that depression is um it it has the the cortex and the amygdala both involved so it's important to realize that there's a very uh very large connection between the depression and the and anxiety because they're both being brought out by the same parts of the brain that are at that are that are at play so that's an important thing to realize also people with depression have a higher amygdala reactivity than those without depression so that means that if someone would go through a uh let's say a tunnel let's just say as an example someone who has depression is going to feel naturally more anxious because their amygdala is going to be more activated than someone who does not feel that way so another person who will just be walking through a tunnel it could be the same tunnel it could be at the same time um someone who does not have depression is not going to feel the same level of anxiety because their amygdala is not as activated as the person with depression. Um also the amygdala activation may be driving ruminate, rumination processes that are associated with depression. So ruminating is also associated with anxiety because sometimes we ruminate over these neg- these scary feelings, but the, with with depression the rumination comes with uh negative thoughts and and um just negative memories and it's constantly going over and over and over again and that can cause that can cause depression so there's the, the that's another connection between the two um and because there are these connections between the 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 parts of the brain that are being triggered so the amygdala the cortex and the the higher activation of the amygdala and the um amygdala causing more um rumination it's not a surprise that many times when people are struggling with anxiety they're also struggling with depression and vice versa if you're struggling with in- with depression it's very it's very understandable and it's not surprising at all that a person is struggling with anxiety as well So another thing that is interesting to note is that another area of the brain that's involved in depression is called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is the part of the brain that's responsible for creating and retrieving memories. 
So in depressed people, the hippocampus has two different things that are going on with people who are struggling with depression. Number one is that it has a lot of times the hippocampus um, area, this, this small thing in your brain, this part of your brain that is creating and retrieving memories is um, it has reduced function. So it's not going to remember things as well. Um, and the other thing about it is that it's smaller because um, it's smaller than a person who does not have depression because um, the, a person who is struggling with depression and is constantly feeling down has chronic stress in their life and in their brain and that actually can cause, that can cause the um, a neurons to be killed. So it, it actually causes, it, it kills neurons in the brain region and therefore the the actual hippocampus which is the part of the brain that's responsible for these memories is smaller and it's not working as well as someone who is not struggling with depression so um because depressed individuals are more likely to have a tendency to focus on the negative because their their um mind is constantly the the memory thing is is close is is smaller and it's also not as it's not a it's not as strong it's not working as well as someone who doesn't struggle with depression um it's much more possible and much more likely that the person could also be struggling with anxiety because they're they're not feeling like they have these like positive memories in their mind now um they are that means that a person who is struggling with with depression has a harder time um coming up with and remembering positive memories they're much more difficult for them to access so if you think about it living with depression is like living with a brain that is predisposed to produce more negative thoughts which is not a pleasant thing to think about um and i'm gonna give you a little bit of hope hopefully um a little bit in a little bit but don't don't lose hope just because of this but just to think just to help you think about this is that if you, if a person, if, if you or any person is constantly only ruminating and remembering about negative memories because of the depression, so that is causing their, their mind to only go to negative places. And when someone has very negative feelings and negative memories, then it's only natural for them to think, oh my gosh, I only have negative things in my past life, like in the past that I've, that I've experienced. So what does that mean for my future? That means that the future doesn't look too great either. So that would very, that can very, very easily lead to more anxiety because if you don't have positive memories to, to like, um, to like fall back on and pick out to be able to rely on, to bring you up and, and help you think of a more positive future, um, then it's harder to think of a positive future, which as a result is going to cause anxiety for the person. So, um, if you can, if you think about it in that way, it's not really so surprising that anxiety and, and depression are so interconnected because there's so many similarities and there are so many, um, different parts of the depression that can cause anxiety. And there are so many parts of the anxiety that can cause depression. They both go both ways, but that doesn't mean that, um, that you don't have any hope. So just uh, just to put it out there, that just because there's more of a tendency for something, meaning just because someone who has depression um, has more of a tendency to ruminate on negative thoughts and negative memories, does not mean that it, that can't be changed. You can you do have the ability to change the channel in your brain to change what you are focusing on, what you're thinking of. It just might take more effort than the person next to you or that you are naturally comparing yourself to. So whether that be a sibling or a coworker or a friend and you're wondering like why am I having these negative thoughts? And if you are going to go about that and treat yourself in this way of just like putting yourself down and shaming yourself and just thinking like I'm such a like I'm such a bad person. A lot of times people say that like I'm such a bad person. I can only think of negative things and like I have no hope. Then that's going to be a bigger struggle than saying, "Wow, okay, I accepting the fact that I might have this predisposition." That means that I have to be more conscious and aware of making these changes and doing these things in my life which I'm going to go into in just a moment. Um then the person next to me, which is just the reality that's just the reality. So, and it, this could be compared to like someone, let's just say, who has a predisposition for for 
they, they they're told by their doctors that they have they they have a very high chance of of getting type being diagnosed with like let's say type 2 diabetes so they might be they might have to exercise and eat a healthier diet than the person next to them and they could either look at them and say oh my goodness i have no hope i'm gonna be I'm going to be diagnosed with diabetes and like there's nothing I can do about that. And I'm just going to like do whatever everyone else is doing and either not take care of myself or I'm not going to think about it. Or they could take ownership of it and say like, okay, I see that I have a higher or more of a disposition towards this. And if I have that, then I know that this is going to be a very big focus for me. Even if it's not necessarily a focus for somebody else, this is very, very important for me to be able to do, to be able to function at my best, to be able to be as healthy as I can, either mentally or emotionally or medically, physically, in any area that you wanna be healthy in. Um, it's important to be able to have that outlook and say like, even if you have a predisposition towards this, it doesn't mean that all hope is lost. So with that introduction, I wanna ask like, what are some things that we can do if we have a predisposition for anxiety or predisposition for depression or both, um, or we are already struggling with either of those, what are certain things that you can do? Now, some of these things are things that you could do for anxiety and depression, and some of these are just things that, that might be helpful with depression. And um, if you have struggled with anxiety and depression, you will understand, and I, I know this because uh, from like a, a bunch of people that I've spoken to, like there is a clear difference between the feelings of anxiety and the feelings of depression. The depression is more of like hopelessness and a lack of motivation, whereas like the anxiety is a is, is a different feeling. But both are not very pleasant things to have to deal with on a for sure not on a daily basis. They are they're very very difficult things. So what are some things that we can do to help ourselves if we're feeling depressed or if we're feeling anxious? What are some of the things that you can do now? This the first thing that I'm going to say, um, with depression, a lot of the times, um, one of the things that helps is actually fix, uh, switching gears, meaning switching your focus on from what you're fo like, what you're focusing on. So if you see yourself ruminating on something, try to switch gears and think of something positive. Now, if you're having a hard time doing that, you could either look at your phone, look at memories that might be able to trigger something that was a happy time or something like that but you do have control somewhat over if you see that you're that you are ruminating over negative feelings you do have control over the idea the the possibility of changing changing gears switching gears in in what you're actually focusing on and what you're thinking about um the next thing we speak about a lot 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 in everyone's health would improve if they would do this but it is even more in people who struggle with anxiety and depression, and that is mindfulness. So being able to set aside time every day and be able to focus on the present moment. A lot of times people are able to do this during davening. Um, that is a big time that people are able to focus. Now, a lot of times people in today's day and age have such a hard time being mindful and focusing on the present moment and what they're doing that the the one of the the one of the many things that people gained from from davening in the past has been like this this steady set of like mindfulness being able to focus on one thing being able to focus on your present not getting distracted in a thousand ways from all the distractions that we have in our daily life um and this is something that has been stripped from us a lot of the, a lot of us it has been stripped from a lot of us and it is so so helpful and so healthy to be able to be mindful and and meditate and it helps with a lot with anxiety and depression um another thing is to focus on happy memories and ha focusing on happy memories actually boosts the serotonin in the body so the serotonin is a good feeling hormone in the body and people who are struggling with depression um, they don't have that chemical coming through naturally as much in their body. And if you are able to think of a positive memory, you will be able to um, increase the serotonin in your body, which, which could help you a lot. Um, there's also something called the GLAD technique, um, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But the GLAD technique also works for anxiety and depression. And this is um, a way... It's most helpful if you are able to write this down. And I know that um, Faye has actually said like um, a way that you can, uh, a great way to journal is to do like 
Um, I think it's TSP, like something that you're thankful for, something that you are, um, now I'm not remembering it, um, something that you're proud of yourself for and something that you are, I forgot what TS, um, something that you're, that you're working on maybe. I don't remember what the S stands for. I'm sorry, but the, the, um, so that's a great thing also, but the glad technique is actually something that helps a lot of times with people who are struggling with anxiety and depression. I wrote it down here and I'm realizing, I realized as I was writing it that it's going to be backwards because this is the Instagram and the camera's facing me, but I'll still read it. Um, so glad stands for gratitude, learning or learned, um, accomplishment and, um, something that delighted you. So if people are able to do this in their, incorporate this in their daily lives, um, it could help you tremendously. And I'll explain why in a second, but something gratitude. So it's one thing that you have, one gratitude that you have, one thing that you're grateful for. Um, it could be either something major or something small. Um, L is something that you learned. So one thing that you learned today, something you either recognized or figured out. And a lot of times, People have a harder time figuring that out because they're like, what did I learn today? But if you are able to be more conscious about like, what is something that I actually learned today that that is something that either I figured out or that I noticed or that is something new, new information. Um, this is also a helpful um, accomplishment is one accomplishment that you did today, something that you feel is meaningful, even if it's self care, that's something that you accomplished. And D is something that delighted you. So it's one thing that delighted you today, meaning something that made you feel joyful, something that made you laugh, or something that made you even smile. Now, the the um, the positive thing that comes out of this is that um, you're if you're able to focus on positive events that have occurred each day and write them down, it will help and it can help create and access more positive memories because if you're being able to be mindful about these positive things that are being that are happening and occurring and coming into your life every single day it's much easier for you to be able to focus on these things when you're having a hard time doing when you're having a hard time accessing them now if they're written down and you're having a hard time accessing that them then all you need to do is go to your notebook and open it and remember all of these things so if you're feeling very down or you're feeling very unmotivated you can just open it and it will hopefully boost the serotonin in your brain and help you. Um, so another thing actually that people find to be very helpful is if they watch sometimes if they're feeling, if they're feeling very depressed is watching comedians or, um, or what listening to something funny or recalling like watching uh, an old video of themselves from a memory that they've had to create and help them access these positive memories. Again, you're trying to create and access these positive memories that you have. Um, so then again, I wanted to just point out that worry a lot of the time, which is associated with anxiety, is also very much associated with depression. And um, if you are able, if someone is finding themselves worrying a lot, 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 um, it's helpful to be able to take that worry and channel it into something more useful, which is if you're, if you're worrying about something and you take that worry and you're able to put it into planning something, then you're actually taking that and not letting it drag you down. You're actually able to propel, use that to propel you to move forward and plan something. Um, but if you're, one of the things that therapy can help you with is that if you're constantly coming up with like the what ifs, the negative side of what these things can bring up and what can happen with these with these plans or worries that you're having, um, a therapist a lot of times is able to uh, bring that up to you. Like they can recognize it as an outsider, bring it up to you and help you channel that into more of a positive way. So um, other things that help people who are... Um, who are struggling with depression or ways to become more resistant to depression is putting their feelings into words. So actually studies show that talking about your feelings and discussing them reduces the amygdala activation in your brain, which is pretty amazing. And it activates the parts of the cortex that focus on the emotion and motivation. So that's one of the many benefits of therapy, but just being able to talk about them. So if you don't, if you don't, have a therapist or you don't want one but you do have a good friend who could just listen without judging like that is extremely extremely helpful especially if you're 
um, feeling like you have a predisposition to anxiety or depression, just being able to talk at your feelings is a really, really helpful thing. Um, you could also do that in therapy. Um, and hopefully the therapist, if you're, if you are in therapy and you're struggling with this and you're trying to get better at this, hopefully the therapist will be able to listen and be able to alleviate that so that you will have just gotten more of this like, um, motivation and all these good feelings in your brain. But aside from that, they'll be able to take the techniques to be able to help you move forward and even grow more than that. Um, then again, mindfulness, focusing on the present, which is what I was talking about before. And, um, the last part is actually getting good sleep and exercise, which is going to reduce your amygdala activation. So, um, all in all, basically there are a lot of, um, of, of co, co, um, not co, like of the same, well, really of the same stuff that's being brought up like the amygdala the cortex the the different thoughts and different things that are coming up for anxiety are also coming up with depression and i hope this shed a light for people on what's going on for them and gave people a little bit more of an understanding and motivation to um take the steps that you need to be the best you that you can be i hope you have a good night take care